some of the firms, the log jam is they've just run out of energy. And I'll be honest, there's probably a level of fatigue. In some cases, they've been burnt because the app hasn't stayed in the industry. Our prices won't get whacked up every year when the investors say, oh, we need, we need more gross profit from you. And I, I would recommend accounting firms go with more and more apps that bill the client directly. I had a problem with firms that had a, a breakaway brand where you don't have the expertise, you don't have the capacity to build the expertise, or you don't have the funds to buy the expertise, rent the expertise. Rishi Ruvarelia is a titan of the accounting tech industry. He's been around for years. He is one of the most well-known and well-loved account managers by all of the firms that have worked with him. He's got years and years and years of experience in finding out what works and what doesn't within firms. I'm really, really excited to kick off Canton on Change again with Rich because he's got a wealth of information to add and I'm sure there'll be nuggets that you can pick up from it. But without further ado, let's get into it. A couple of years ago, there were those issues, weren't there, with the lorries on the M25 where there was just everything backed up. Yeah. And if you think about the value of all of the goods in those lorries, it must have been millions. And it, that's what it sort of feels like to me in the app space at the moment is that there's so much value there, but it's all just log jams where it can't move because there's some issue in implementation. Is that what you're seeing or are you seeing a different picture of the world? I'm seeing, I'm seeing two sides of that. So I'm seeing uh, definitely a log jam and I'm seeing a, uh, if we use the motorway analogy, I'm seeing a hard shoulder where uh, there, some of the firms are available and calling you via, in, via the hard shoulder and other firms, you're log jammed behind a number of different processes. Um, I think the log jam is not a bad thing if the firm is doing the right thing. And I, some of the firms I'm working with have said to me, Rish, this will be a year before we even look at you as a product. Um, but what it is, is we're doing the due diligence of every single app that we put into our stack. We right. will test to the hint. We'll test it fully. So we'll, we'll do ev all the due diligence on this, this type of an expenses app, for example. We'll do all of the due diligence on a payments app. We'll do, and this will take a number of months to go through, but we'll have a plan where that app stack that we've got is exactly what we need it to be. We've, we've done the due diligence on our client base. We've done the due diligence on the product base, and we're going to put it to, put it to our clients that this is the recommend the stack and then we'll review on a regular basis. So when the, when the log jam is that I genuinely have no issue with that. What I feel is some of the firms, the log jam is they've just run out of energy in, in implementing this process. And I'll be honest, there's probably a level of fatigue, cool. um, especially with the quote unquote early adopter firms where they went hard with zero. They went hard with the apps that came around zero, the five or six that every firm needed to have. They went with those. And in some cases they've been burnt because the app hasn't stayed, it stayed in, in industry or they've changed pricing. So it doesn't quite work. And there's a lot of time taken to learn an app, to implement it, to make it as part of your process and for that to be pulled on you. And then you have to go, go back to the drawing board. Um, and what the recommendation I have for accountants on that is look for an app that doesn't just focus on accounting. So an app that will help you in an accounting space, but has an income stream outside of the accounting space. Um, that sounds like I'm talking about air Wallets, and I'm, I'm genuinely not. Um, it, I just feel that the, the challenge you'll have with apps like that is we will we will never completely make the perfect for accountants, but it will be very close to that. Uh, unlike an app that's specific for accounting firms, but we have an income stream that comes in outside of the accounting space. That means that you're not worried that we're going to pull out the market very quickly. Mm. We're not relying on the accounting space. So our prices won't get whacked up, um, every year when the investors say, oh, we need, we need more gross profit from you. That's, that's what happened. We, we spread our risk between the different markets that we work in so that you know, the product is there for a long term and you can build your processes around it. So it's looking for a sustainable business, right? Like you Correct. and I both will have had that challenge and that common objection in the early zero days of, well, what if zero goes bust? Um, it was, it was, a, it was a, sorry, it was a regular, yeah, it was a regular question. It was, uh, yeah. uh you, you, and, and accountants for 
didn't like the fact that we were not profit making. Um, oh. so I, I went to accounting firms who said, we're looking at your books. You haven't made a profit in X. And I went, we, we gave the investors a choice. Either we make a profit now and the profit is here, or we make a profit in five or six years time. And it's off the screen. You can't even see the profit anymore because it's that good. So that was the choice that we made as a business. I personally don't think that is a suitable solution in this market because investors are now looking for gross profit as early as they can. Now they want ARPU, they want, um, a, a better LTV to cap ratio, uh, all these acronyms I'll, uh, I'll explain if, if I need to, but, um, the average revenue per user is, is key to them. The, the keeping your lifetime value of the customer as high as you can with the cost of acquisition, as low as you can, um, and, and essentially gross profit. Previously, it was all about revenue and numbers. Those are vanity things. It's gross profit and, and ARPU and LTV to CAC, which is the key driver for investment in a product. So how do you see that impact in the way that accountants and bookkeepers can expect to engage with vendors? I would, I would say that I, I think there'll be less of a, the accountant needs to take on the subscription conversation. Um, and, and I'll, I'll be honest, it's because in my experience, not all accounting firms value their own service. So when an app increases its fees, they push back a little bit harder than the business would. Um, mm. because in some cases, an accounting firm hasn't touched its fees in 10 years. So to, for a vendor to be able to incrementally increase their, their cost, you get more pushback from an accounting firm than you would from a business that says, actually, I'm happy with that. Also, not enough firms were charging the service back onto their clients yeah. or charged up front and then had to manage the increase throughout the year. So I think more and more apps, and I, I would recommend accounting firms go with more and more apps that bill the client directly. Um, yeah. There's a, there's a harder process to get the client to embed it because of that. But once it's embedded, it's an easier process to have. And so if you, if you think about the firms that you're working with that are really nailing this, so they've like nailed their digital transformation, they're starting to offer that, well, they've integrated it properly into their workflows and they're getting the value out of it and they're transporting that value to the client. Is that the approach that they're taking? They're giving those options or are they more saying, actually, this is the way we work. These are on or off the bus. I think they're, they're, I, I use the analogy of, of a doctor uh, uh, and having a wife as a doctor helps with this analogy. But <laughs> if, if you were to go to Jem and say, this is the illness I've got and she diagnoses it, she doesn't then come to you with three packets of pills and say, choose which one you want. Yeah. She says, my years of experience and the degrees and all of this has said, this is the, the packet of pills to take for the course of this, this illness. And I think not enough accounting firms have the confidence to go to their clients to say, this is the solution likely to be zero. Doesn't have to be, but likely to be zero. And then this app, this app, and this app will be the, the, the tech stack that you need in the business. And I'm basing that on the, my knowledge of other businesses in the same industry as you. And I'm basing that on other bits and pieces. I think the messaging is important. You can't just say this is the solution end all because the inner six year old, and I've got a six year old who might walk in at some point today, just what, why, why, why? So preempt the why, explain to the client why you've made this decision. Give them a really good understanding of the decisions you've made in the practice to choose that stack of solutions or that single solution for their client type, and then refer to other clients that you've embedded it into. So that sounds like really good advice. Um, and it sounds like a very valuable conversation for the client as well. Also sounds quite time consuming and it sounds like someone's got to take responsibility for that in the firm. So someone's got to be the person that's going to sit and go through that. They've got to, like you said earlier on, do the due diligence, um, have that discussion, guide the client through that journey. How are firms that you're working with finding the time and the capacity and the expertise to be able to deliver that? Cause that's a real roadblock, isn't it? It, it is a roadblock. I think in the smaller firms, um, ha the, the, they haven't had to do the level of due diligence that larger firms seems to have to do. Um, 
they, they do it by having a client come on board, making sure it works. And then that's their due diligence. So they use it, use it as sort of a, internally they use it themselves or they use yeah. a, a, a friendly client to embed the solution into work out the kinks, works out, work out what it needs to happen and go, actually this can work on these number of clients here. Um, with the larger firms, we've had a, a proper due diligence. So we're jumping through many hoops. Um, I'm getting legal teams involved. I'm getting uh, information security teams involved to make sure that everyone's comfortable with what we're doing. Um, the other side is just some of the help information that we've got on our own website is helpful because um, it, for the, the Airwallex example is we protect every penny that a client gives us. So unlike a bank, we're not bound by the 85,000 FSCS guarantee. So sharing that information typically just says to a client, actually, this is safe and it's about safety. Yeah. Once they use the solution and, and most cloud-based systems natively are easy to use when you go into them, there are some complications that you, and some kinks that you need to understand, but in the main, you can see them and they just, they seem to be intuitive. So I, I get that, but it's almost like giving a really easy word, word search to a toddler, but not telling them the, the words that they need to find, right? You can find words in there. And that's how I feel about intuitive software. Like I can probably find a way to do it and it feels intuitive, but unless I know that I've got it right, I'm still going to have that nagging doubt in the back of my head. So I think education is really, really important. But what you mentioned there about how firms are using your resources to allay those concerns with clients. Do you feel that vendors need to do more to provide accountants and bookkeepers with content to help with that conversation with the client? Like, is there, is there more responsibility on the vendors for that? Do you think? Most definitely. So for me, um, I think there needs to be not just the, the, the content on the security of the solution, but also a, a play by play on how to use it. And we go back to zero, zero, you go into it, it's simple. And then a lot of accounting firms push back when you went to them with zero and say, it doesn't do what we need it to, because, um, on, on save, you do this, 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 and on zero, it just seems to be one click and you go, that's, it's doing all that in the background. It's doing yeah. what you need to do. This is, this is, this is happening in one click. Um, and it was explaining to them and uh, until you showed them, uh, until a, a, a accountant that worked for zero went in and said, actually, this is what's happening in the background that allayed their fears on it being too simple. And then you go into the, the, the sort of the, the deep dark bits of the reporting and the journals and everything else. And suddenly you see their eyes light up because it's easy yeah. and complicated at the same time. And the beauty was it was a segregation of easy and complicated. Your, you didn't have to give your clients the complicated piece of the, the kit because they, 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 you didn't want them to break it. The way Zero did it was you had the simple bit and you had the complicated bit. And the complicated bit, you had the certification process that went through, which yep. wasn't as comprehensive as it could have been. But I, I don't think if it was too comprehensive, people would have done it. Um, it was, I, I think you needed to be high level general. And then the super users can go in and start doing the really clever stuff with zero and just come out with, I, I, just use zero in a way that it was never designed for because you yeah. found you found a weird solution that works. Well, that's when you know you've really got adoption, I think, when people start fooling around with things and using it in their own workflows and experimenting themselves, right, rather than just sort of colouring by numbers or whatever. Yeah. Um, but so if we go back to that analogy then, that there's, there's all of these tools, all these resources, they're sort of backed up on the motorway, and ultimately SMEs aren't getting to benefit from them. There's a lot of value on the table, but no one can kind of get to it. If we, if we assume that that's a problem, right, which I kind of feel like it is, um, does, uh, who's responsible for fixing that? Is it, is it vendors or is it accountants and bookkeepers sorting out the implementation processes? Like, where does that lie? Oh, I mean, I'm going to sit directly on the fence here and say it lies with both. Um, I, 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 I think the, if your early adopter firms have got app fatigue, then the sort of the, the, the later adopters are going to need to step up. But to do that, the apps are going to need to have an easier flow to, to help the accounting firm onboard their clients onto the platform. Um, 
just really have their teams understand how it works. Yep. Um, and there, there, there needs to be a focus on education. So, um, mm. I'm, I'm currently writing internally. I haven't, I haven't told anyone at work this, but a client avatar. So this is the type of client you may have. This is what's suitable for AirWallets and, and going to firms with that because we've done different things. And I think the challenge is what's right for AirWallets and not every firm will automatically know that's perfect. And I think we want to make that as easy as possible. And I think not enough firms, not enough firms are doing that sort of breakdown of this is why you would use us. This is what, this is the version of what we should use, um, what you should use with that type of client. Uh, and just making yeah. it very easy. If you make things very easy, if you give them a cheat sheet, it just means that they're not having to think about everything. They, they can go, oh, that's perfect. That, that'll work. A quick call to Rish. Uh, I've got this client. Is this suitable? This is perfect. Okay, I'll send them across. Um, I think the apps need to work really closely with the firms. The firms may also need a team that can help the apps as well, because I think um, the challenge with some firms is it's, it's resting on one partner. And actually what, where it may need to sit is a, a, a whole firm sort of cloud team. So I, I used, I used the analogy quite a lot that when I did my A-levels and my GCSEs, IT was a separate lesson in both a GCSE level and A level. Now IT or ICT is across every lesson. So yep. your history lesson will have an element of ICT in it. And I think. The same needs to happen in firms. You need to have that tech team, but that tech team need to be across the practice, not this standalone thing. And this is where I had a problem with firms that had a, a breakaway brand. So this was our cloud brand. You go, you've done all this, all these years of, um, sort of goodwill has been created for this, this practice that you've created. And then you have this cloud offering, which is cheaper. And that's the reason you've palmed it off. But it actually needs to be more expensive and you want your existing clients to look at it and go, well, I get all of those service as part of my fee. Perfect. I'm going to move to that. So the same way I don't like the brand to be broken away from the main brand. I don't want yeah. the cloud team to be a separate division within the firm. I want them to embed the whole firm. So your, your, your cloud or your tech team should be the team that you look at for any tech changes that happens within the practice. We need a new accounts production solution. Your tech team should be part of that process. We need, um, yeah. uh, we need to re relook at our app stack. Tech team should be part of that process. We need to look at our client base and see how we can earn more from our client base based on services that we're not offering them at the moment. Our tech team should be part of that process. I think it's intuitively, a, it seems a fairly common sense thing to do, right? If you're going to start to take on tech and take it seriously and do more things with it that you would have a tech team that sit over here and they manage that. But, um, some of the things that I've seen is that, well, the consequence of that is that then anytime something comes up to do with tech, all of the other departments go, well, that's their problem. We're not going to deal with that. We'll just pass it over to them. And they end up getting like, if you're successful and start adopting more tech, they get really overwhelmed and then the yeah. wheels come off. So I, I really, like what you said there about actually has to be a firm wide thing. So if we, if we're sort of recapping about well, what are the re, like, what are the firms that are being successful with this doing? And that doesn't necessarily mean that they're using all of the apps and do those things by successful. I mean that they're delivering the value that they want to deliver and using technology as a, as a platform for that. Point. So the firms that are doing that, they are probably engaging well with their app partners, right? And getting content from them. That's correct. Um, they are being prescriptive about what the client should do in a given circumstance that's going to be right for them. Uh, and like you said there, they're looking at technology as a practice wide thing rather than sort of some offshoot. What else or what other tips or advice would you give people to be successful in this, in this domain as a practice? So I, I look at, we're going into cars again or, or most ways again, but in, in the car, uh, let's ignore manual cars for now. In the car, you've got two pedals. One is go, yeah. one is stop. And you have to have your route planned properly so that the go stays as long as it needs to before you press stop. So planning is, is key to this is create an app stack that, you know, fits your client base, understand the, the niches you have in the practice or the, the specialisms you you've naturally created in the practice so that you can build an app stack around the clients you already have and then build on that app stack when you need to. 
but limit your app stack to what you can physically handle. Um, so with some firms, the app stack might be five. For some firms, it might be 10. For some firms, it might be 15, or it might be a breakdown of these are the five core apps. These are the five additional apps. And then we will work with these five apps, but we'll actually outsource the implementation to someone else because we don't have the capacity within our team. And I think that last part is key is knowing where you don't have the capacity and say, actually, yeah. I'm going to bring in a trusted third party to bring this into me. The same way you would use a trusted third party to offer outsourcing to your own services. You yeah. also need to look at that from a tech perspective. So where you don't have the expertise, you don't have the capacity to build the expertise, or you don't have the funds to buy the expertise, rent the expertise. All that assumes that you've got a strategy in place first, which, which sounds like the takeaway there is what have that idea of where you want to go to and then be intentional about where you spend the time. Do we outsource, like you're saying, to an implementer? Do we hire? Do we retrain someone internally? But I guess unless you've got that North Star of a vision and the mission of where you're going with it and what the strategy looks like, it's really hard to come up with that stuff on the fly, isn't it? It, it is. And it, it starts from that first point of segmenting your client base. So really understand your client base and what they need. It, it might even be that you ask the clients what, what if, you, if you gave your client a blank sheet of paper to help with their finance process, what would the process yeah. look like? And then if... If enough of those clients come back with something similar, find a solution that fits that and become the expert in that. Awesome. And so just to wrap up then, um, what would be one piece of advice that you would give to tech vendors in this space to better serve their accounting and bookkeeping partners and therefore be more successful to the channel? Yeah, the one word is support. Um, mm. and, and to sort of expand on that is really understand that the accounting channel is not a sales channel. It will never be a sales channel. It'll be a partner channel. And if you partner with the right firms, if you partner with the right people in the right firms, they will help the, your, your product get into their client base, but you need to be there. You need to help them understand how to use the solution. You could need to help them help their clients understand how it's going to help them and help them understand the, 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 the savings on both sides. It may be a time saving. It may be a, a cost saving. It may be just a, a single process that makes my life easier because I haven't got multiple loggers for different things, but you just need to work with them and give them, give them the tools to help you sell your solution. Yes. It's a long-term investment, right? Correct. Rich, that's amazing. Thank you so much for the, uh, for the pearls of wisdom there. If anyone wants to follow up with you, ask questions or just follow you on social media and, and hear more about what you've got to say, what is the best way for them to see that? Um, if you want, uh, my rants, then, then what was informally known as Twitter. Um, but, uh, LinkedIn is the best place to find me. So, um, my name is Rishi Ruprelia. Just search Rishi Ruprelia Air Wallex or Rishi Ruprelia Zero, and that will be the one that comes up. Um, and you'll see a bunch of selfies of me not smiling on trains. <laughs> Amazing. Rich, thanks so much, mate. No worries at all. Thank you.